Good morning. This morning I'm going to talk about Jesus feeding the 5,000. The apostles gathered round Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat and said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognised them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding villages countryside and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then Jesus told them to make all the people sit in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute among the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and they were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was 5,000. I was speaking to a friend about this yesterday and she said, it's an odd story, but I think it means if we all share what we've got, we'll have enough for all. I was smiling at her. I said, that's a great analogy. Great. But this isn't a story. And she looked at me, gone out. And I said, this isn't a story. This isn't a story that Jesus taught to show us something, one of his parables. This, this is a miracle. So shall we start by looking at that? A miracle is not a parable. There's a difference between them. And this is quite clear. Miracles are events that took place. Jesus actually did something. Jesus was the instigator of the most amazing, unexpected, astounding, unexplainable, unexpected events. Like raising Lazarus, his friend from the dead changing water into wine and on this occasion feeding the crowd. So this is one of Jesus's miracles. Jesus actually performed this. But why? Let's look at the big picture shall we? Jesus and his disciples were traveling all over from town to town and teaching all around the countryside and wherever they went, they were attracting big, big crowds. So define a big crowd. I can see you thinking that. <laughs> Have you ever been to a rock festival held in a field? Something like Glastonbury, although that is magnificently huge. Or a big sporting event or a stadium event. A premier sporting event can hold 
easily hold 20,000 people. It's an enormous amount of people and a phenomenal amount of organisation goes into events. Things like how many toilets are needed, security, crowd control, seating, areas, drinks, food, first aid. The list is endless. Huge and huge amounts of people organising, people being there to help. But this, this is, we're being told, is a crowd that was just following Jesus around, listening to his teaching. The Bible tells us that there were 5,000 men. So why am I talking about such a large crowd? Well, it's easy, really. In the time of Jesus... Women and children weren't counted, only the men. So the Bible says a crowd of 5,000 men. So if they were 5,000 married men and each took their wife, that's 10,000. There may have been some single men in there, but there might have been some single women. So let's go with 10,000, shall we? And if they were married, they might have had children. And if both were there, they wouldn't have left the children at home. So let's go with an average of two children. So we're suddenly talking 20,000 people. 20,000 people. 5,000 men. 5,000 women. And probably 10,000 children. Minimum. A lot of people. And there was no amenities. It wasn't planned. There were no shops or vendors, no drink stations, no toilets, nothing. Everything these people needed, they would have brought with them at the beginning of the day. You know, like a family picnic. If you've got children with you, it doesn't last five minutes. They're constantly wanting, wanting, wanting. So the day had been a long day and Jesus had been teaching all day and the disciples had been teaching. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, we're going to have to send these people home. We can't feed them. They're going to have to go home. And you can understand why. Such a large amount of people, what are they going to do? And Jesus said, why can't you feed them? And the answer, the disciples said, Lord, we haven't got that kind of money. And, and to organise it, we haven't got the time to go to the towns and buy enough food for all these people. They're going to have to go. But Jesus didn't want the people to go. He didn't want them to go home. So he said to his disciples, well, what have we got? And we're told that a small boy comes forward and he's got five loaves and two fishes and he makes this simple and very generous offer to Jesus to have all he has. Have this. I have in my bag five loaves and four fishes. And can you imagine Jesus' smile? I can. But Jesus turns this simple offering into enough, enough to feed a crowd of at least 20,000 people. And not only is there enough, there's leftovers. We're told there's 12 baskets. I can still, in my mind, picture 12 disciples going around collecting up all the spare and having a huge basket full each. With God, it was enough. Wow. Absolutely wow. It's hard to comprehend the magnitude of what happened and the event and the reaction. So let's go back to why. Other than the fact they needed food, why did Jesus do this miracle? 
Why did, what does it teach us? Because we know that everything that was recorded about Jesus teaches us something important. I was still talking to my friend yesterday and I tried to explain this in a different way. I tried to explain it like a mother's love. And I was saying, you know when, when you have your first baby and your heart is bursting with love. You can't tell anybody how much love you've got for your child. It is just all encompassing, huge amount of love, complete and joyous love that you have for your baby. And that doesn't go away as they grow. But I remember being pregnant with my second child. And I remember worrying about this. I remember sitting there thinking, how am I gonna love this child as much as I love my first child? How can I love this baby as much as I love that baby, which I've already got and is a little person and I know so well, and I love so, so much. And I kept thinking, have I got to share the love? How can I love that person less? And how can I not love this person as much? I didn't understand it. But I shouldn't have worried. God's got it covered. <laughs> because when the second baby came, the love just grew. It just doubled. I didn't love the first child any less. I loved the second child as much as I loved the first child. It expanded to be two children. Love expands and love can be all encompassing. And the love of a mother never diminishes. Doesn't matter how many children you have, the love expands. Like a cell, you know, a biological cell. So the science tells us that life starts with one cell and then there's a second cell and then the cells grow, but they're all individual cells growing, growing, growing. God had got it covered. I shouldn't have worried. God can do anything. He can take anything and expand it. It tells us this in the Bible, right at the start when he creates the world. But we don't always hear it in the same way. He can take something so simple and complicated like love, like a mother's love, and he expands it. And if he can do that, like a simple cell of life and expand it and grow it into a person. He can do anything. He multiplies what we give him. Clever that. So, Jesus multiplies what we give him. When we feel inadequate or think that we don't have anything to offer God and you're sitting there thinking, what can I offer? What can I give God? Just remember, through Christ, the smallest thing is enough. He tells us the parable, the story of the mustard seed and says he can make the tiniest little mustard seed move a mountain. A little bit, whatever it is, is enough with God and he can expand it into something huge. He can multiply everything we give him. Whatever the gift is that we give him, whatever we can give him, whatever time we can give him, whatever 
whatever. If it's just some money, if you just give, God can expand it. As Christians, we have to totally depend on his wisdom and power. As Christians, and as you learn more about God, this becomes easier. When you're hungry, depend on God. Depend on Jesus. He can expand anything. Because when life presents us with challenges that we can't handle, and there are many in this world, many challenges, if we turn to God, he always knows the answer. He always knows the way to help. He always knows what's best. And he can multiply things to help us. Like the day Jesus needed to feed the 5,000. 